And then, you know, you have some things in between where maybe you're, you're using transistors, but now you're starting to use them instead of in a digital way, in an analog way. And so you're trying to get those circuits to behave more like neurons. Mm -hmm. And then that's a little bit, quite, quite a bit more uh, on the neuromorphic side of things. You're trying to get your circuits, although they're still based on silicon, you're trying to get them to perform operations that are highly analogous to the operations in the brain. And that's where a great deal of work is in neuromorphic computing. People like Giacomo Indoveri and Gert Kauenberg's, Jennifer Hasler, countless others. It's a, it's a rich and exciting field uh, going back to Carver Mead in the late 1980s. And then all the way on the other extreme of the continuum is where you say, I'll give up anything related to transistors or semiconductors or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not starting with the assumption that I'm going to use any kind of conventional computing hardware. And instead, what I want to do is try and understand what makes the brain powerful at the kind of information processing it does. And I want to think from first principles about what hardware is best going to enable us to capture those information processing principles in an artificial system. And that's where I live. That's where that's where I'm doing my exploration these days. So uh, what are the first principles of brain-like computation communication? Right. Yeah. 